Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today we're covering Tropical Stout, but before we get into the data, I'd like to congratulate Andy Cox, who placed third at the National Homebrewing Competition with his Mean Brews Wit Beer. Congratulations, Andy, and thanks for supporting the channel. Let's get right into the data. I was only able to find 10 recipes for Tropical Stout. Uh, this has been added to BJCP in 2015, so not a lot of recipes, winning recipes of this style um, before that time. Uh, we had one best of show, five gold, three silver, and one bronze. Uh, the BJCP style is 16C, a very dark, sweet, fruity, moderately strong ale with smooth, roasty flavors without a burnt harshness. Uh, when I looked at the 10 recipes, we didn't see a lot of evolution, which is to be expected because it's such a short period of time. It's been... Uh, in competitions but people are interpreting this all over the board so I'll get into that when we talk about the recipe looking at the original gravity BJCP range is 1.055 to 1.075 76 somewhere around there uh, the average was 1.086 all the way up to 1.122 a lot of people told me that they had an imperial stout that they didn't uh, hit their gravity on and they entered it in tropical stout so we're seeing a lot of similarities between, think of it as a, as a baby Imperial Stout or even a baby Baltic Porter um, because it is supposed to be lagered. Um, so think of it as that it, around those terms and you'll, you'll understand what the style is. My recipe is going to be right on the mean there. IBUs, it's supposed to be a little bit hoppy, uh, anywhere between 26 and 68. Um, the midpoint was 43 was the average. I'm going to be a little bit high. Um, not because I'm seeing evolution in IBUs, but I'm seeing a little bit of evolution in IBUs and a little bit in uh, the original gravity, which is driving um, the ratio to change. So one's going one way, one's going the other. Uh, we've got a good Pearson's correlation coefficient of 0.36, um, driving up that BUGU ratio, which is why I'm bumping up the hops a little bit. Uh, SRM, um, anywhere between 30 and 40 is the style. Um, we had recipes go up to 74. Uh, the average was 49 SRM and 97 EBC. Um, and how this shaked out with my recipe was I was going to be on the very high side of this. I don't trust these numbers very much, and it all depends on um, which roasted malts you choose uh, to where you're going to end up on the scale. And the ones I chose were British, pretty dark roasted malts, and they're on the high side. Malt percentages. Average was 72% base, 13% uh, roast, eight around 8% 8 crystal, 6% adjunct, and about 1, 1.3% toast malts. Um, when you look at just it, the recipes that use those, the averages, uh, anywhere between 58 and 82% uh, percent of the base malt was the range there. I'm going to be right at the mean there. Uh, I think it was 72, 73%. Uh, zooming in on the other malts, 100% of the recipes use a roast malt and 100% used crystal malt, 70% use an adjunct, and only 30% use toast malts. Um, we're, uh, I plan to use um, right at the mean for the roast, uh, right at the mean for the crystal, and a little bit less than the mean on the adjuncts, about 7%. Looking at the base malts, the most common were two row and Maris Otter. 60% um, of the recipes used two row, American two row, uh, at an average of 72% of the grist, and 40% used Maris Otter at an average of 68% of the grist. We also had Munich, Vienna, and Oat Malt used in three separate recipes. Um, I plan to be uh, use a mix of these two malts, um, right around a little above 30% for each Maris Otter and um, two row. Uh, to give me that 70-something percent that I need for the for the base malts. Crystal malts, uh, most prominent were Dark Crystal and Special B, at about uh, 6 of the recipe, 6 of 10. Uh, next most prominent was a Light Crystal, and then uh, Carapils. Uh, medium Crystal and Golden Naked Oats were just not used very prominently in this style. Uh, dark Crystal, 60% of the recipes, and an average of 4.4% of the grist. Special B, 60% of the recipes at an average of 3.3% of the grist. And Light Crystal, 40% of the recipes at 4.2. Um, I'm going to use all three. Um, for my Dark Crystal, I'm going to be at 
Same with my special B, 3%. And for my light crystal, I'm going to be at 2%. And that gives me my 8%, which is per the averages. Um, we are seeing a de decrease in the use of special B over time. Not a lot of data points, so don't really trust it. But my I, again, I'm using 3%, so right in this where this is showing to be the sweet spot. Toast malts, we had three recipes use a toast malt, and they all used a biscuit malt. I'm getting kind of that biscuity flavor by adding some Maris Otter uh, into my grist. Um, anyway, a third of the recipes are right around 4%. Very, pretty narrow band here. I'm not going to use toasted malts in my recipe. Roast malts, uh, most prominent was roasted barley. 80% of the recipes used a roasted barley at an average of 5.1% of the grist, anywhere between 2 and 8% was the range. Uh, next most prominent was chocolate. 70% of the recipes used a chocolate malt, an average of 6.5% of the grist. Others were brown malt, roasted wheat, uh, black patent coffee malt, and chocolate rye. Um, I plan to use um, right at about 6% roast barley and right at about 7% um, chocolate malt. That gives me my 13% of roasted malts for the style. Um, adjuncts, most prominent was flaked oats. 40% of the recipes used flaked oats um, at an average of 3.4% of the grist. Pretty narrow band on all these. Um, not a lot of simple sugars. Some use lactose, some use cocoa nibs. Probably should be a spice instead of an adjunct, but I put it in here. Um, I plan to use flaked oats at 7% because uh, that was the adjunct percentage and nothing else. Bittering hops, we had eight different bittering hops used. The most prominent were Magnum, EKG, and Progress. Um, I plan to use Magnum as my bittering hop. One flavor hop used in one recipe. Uh, CTZ was used in one recipe as a flavor hop. I don't plan to use a flavor hop for this style. Aroma hops, this is where people get confused. It says fruity. Um, it's not supposed to be fruity from the hops, but people are winning with fruity hops. So Citra, one recipe each. Citra Mot Motueka, I hope I pronounced that right. And Willamette. Um, both one recipe, all the three, one recipe each. I don't plan to use an aroma hop for this uh, recipe. Uh, the rate of hop additions, um, again, 10% used a flavor hop, which is this curve right here at 0.15 ounce per gallon or 1.12 grams per liter. Um, two recipes, or 20% used aroma hop at 0.32 ounce per gallon, 2.4 grams per liter. I said three, there's one recipe that used those two fruity hops. Uh, so there's only two recipes total that used aroma hops. Um, and if the, and the rate that they did was about 0.32 ounce per so pretty strongly hopped, or 2.4 grams per liter. I don't plan to use either of those. 100%, all recipes, single infusion, no step mashes, no decoctions. Uh, mash rests were anywhere between 150 and 158. The average was 153 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius for... Just your standard 60 minute um, mash was, was average. I plan to be a little high. Um, this is an area where we're seeing some evolution to increase the uh, mash temperature to around 154, 155. Boil duration anywhere between 60 and 120 with a bias towards the 60. Um, 79 was a mean and I'll be at 80 minutes just to follow the trend. Uh, this is where people got, inter uh, got um, you know, played with the recipes was with the yeasts. Um, it, again, it's supposed to be a lager type uh, yeast used at warm, fermented at warmer temperatures. So the first two most prominent were lager strains, um, 3470 uh, or the anchor strain. Um, and then we had some others, so the first three are, are, that one's a lager strain as well. And we had some others, uh, British, American, even a Voskvike. People are asking when's Kvike going to show up. We saw one with uh, Kvike yeast. Um, so I plan to use a lager strain. I'm going to use 3470 here. Um, fermentation temperatures anywhere between 54 and 67 are two most common. The, the, um, the German lager and the American lager, the anchor strain, were, were in the ale temperatures. So I plan to be uh, average starting was 63 for all of them. I plan to be on 65 on this blue curve because that's the yeast that I selected. Um, there wasn't any data on water chemistry. There's one recipe that reported water chemistry. I don't uh, feel like sharing that one because it's not enough data. 
Uh, carbonation volumes were 2.3 and mash pH was 5.4. All right, now find, uh, finally the recipe. Um, start with, again, 38% two row and 34% Maris Otter. Um, we're gonna, for my crystal malts, I'll try to hit all of them in, in order. 2% of crystal 40, 3% crystal 120, and 3% special B. And for my roast malts, I have the 6% um, roast barley and 7% chocolate and then my adjunct 7% flaked oats uh, one thing to note uh, I'm going to because these are so dark uh, I'm going to mash cap at sparge I'm going to try to limit the harshness you do not want harsh bitterness in this style so let's let's add those uh, roasted malts to the mash at the end of the mash out and sparge or Vorloff and sparge through them uh, into our kettle um, we're going to use Magnum, just one addition of Magnum for 47 IBUs at 60 minutes. Um, if you get high enough alpha acids, that's one ounce, so perfect. Um, and I'm going to use the 3470 yeast. I'm going to shoot for original gravity 1.086 and IBUs 47. Um, the water chemistry I'm using is this one right here. Um, pretty low, uh, pretty moderate on the uh, ions here. Um, key is... P key is the pH for this style, so try to hit that 5.4 pH. Um, infusion mash 155 Fahrenheit or 68 Celsius for an hour. I'm going to mash out, and then I'm going to mash cap with the roasted malts and sparge and boil for 80 minutes. Chill to 63 Fahrenheit or 17 Celsius. And I'm going to pitch a pretty big starter because I'm using a lager strain. A uh, 3 liter starter for a 5 gallon batch. Scale that for whatever size you're going to brew. I'm going to ferment at 65 or 18 Celsius, let it free rise up to 70. Uh, actually, not going to let it free rise. This is wrong. Uh, when it gets close to the terminal gravity, I'm going to raise the temperature up to 70 and let it finish out. Um, transfer to a baller keg and carbonate to 2.3 volumes as per the data. And that's it for this style. Uh, next week, um, I'll post a, a poll on YouTube for the style to cover next uh, for the next style. Um, please vote on that. I'll keep it open for a few days, so look out for it on there. And uh, thanks for watching this channel. Um, be sure to check out Box and Barley Corn again. Uh, they're going to have this uh, um, kit available for purchase. Um, Jake's a great guy over there. Um, he's He's been selling some of these kits and getting good feedback. So um, if you're looking to try one of the Mean Brews recipes, check them out at their website. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.